What is going on guys? How are y'all out? Another beer review, another Pelican Brewing beer. If you haven't seen my previous one of the uh, White Russian inspired milk stout, go check that out. I'll have it in the link below probably, if I remember. Um, but yeah, that was a great beer, man. I think it was my first Pelican beers on this channel. And since I have a few of them sitting in the fridge, like I mentioned, you know, get togethers or whatever, um, usually a variety pack or two usually makes it to the event. But uh, yeah, here's a Beak Breaker by them. They are out of Telemuk, Oregon. A uh, double IPA coming at 9%, man. So let's get this into a glass, see what it looks like, smells like, and tastes like. And let's see here. And before anyone says anything about, you know, having a get together, having an event, I had a very small get together and we were all quarantine for I think five to six weeks I don't know how long it's been but five or six weeks and we stayed relatively far away maybe not six feet it could have been six feet but you know like we were responsible about it and so you know um, I, I think it was all good because everyone was quarantined for quite a while uh, into the glass we got I just want to throw that out there man because you know people are always gonna be downers in the comments so just want to address that before that happens it was pretty cool that was pretty damn good pour, man. I'm proud of myself for that. And, oh well, let's get the head first. I poured with just slightly under, I'm gonna say two and a half fingers of this, you know, not white head. It has this tinge of orange to it. Looks like it's gonna be sticking around in a little while. And the bubbles are actually really nicely compact in there, man. They're all like the same size. And they're all, well, the same size on the side of the glass. But on top here, you see incredibly small bubbles. And it's just, Pretty frothy, man. And then larger bubbles are accumulating in the center there. But I wanted to talk about the glass. Oregon Brewers Festival, I think this is the, I can't see, 2013 version. So it is glass. They went to plastic, uh, I think starting 2014, maybe 15. I have all those glasses, or cups, I guess. I uh, decided to use this cup because it is canceled this year due to COVID-19. And it's one of the beer events I actually look forward to. So I look forward to Fort George's um, Festival of Dark Arts, so basically just all huge barrel aged stouts. Not basically, it is all huge barrel aged stouts, I believe. And then the Oregon Brewers Festival, which is, I think, the largest Brewers Festival in the world. Um, last year, they changed it to just Oregon beers, which is odd to me. I mean, it's cool, I guess, but it just wasn't as big. Not as many breweries were there. Not The variety wasn't, I mean, there was a huge variety, but not as many as years before. Um, but yeah, you know, just decided to use this glass just because they're not doing it this year. Let's get to the aroma. Super citrusy, slight dankiness, and then there's a sweet, like, citrus, candied aroma. Yeah, like very, very sweet, overripe um, oranges, candied oranges, and just this very ripe, dank melon smell to it. I'm gonna say cantaloupe. Oh, man, it smells good. It's just like, I don't even know, maybe not peach rings, not even, maybe like high chews, like melon cantaloupe high chews. If you never had those before, they're super addictive. It's like a chew, chewy candy. Um, you find it almost anywhere, like any, um, Asian supermarkets, I think even Hispanic supermarkets have them, maybe even um, um, gas stations, not gas stations, yeah, gas stations might even have them. But yeah, I think that it reminds me of that. It's like very sweet, very overripe fruits, melon, citrus, dankness. That's about all I'm getting on this beer, but let's get to the flavor. Cheers. This is by no means a New England style hazy IPA, obviously. I didn't even talk about the color. I totally forgot, man. Let's talk about the color real quick. Totally missed it. Um, it is a cloudy beer, slight cloudy beer. I, I wouldn't say it's very cloudy. Uh, if anything, I'm gonna say it's pretty damn um, clear. It's, it has a little bit of cloudiness to it, but it's, for the most part, a clear beer. Putting it away from the light, it's like this amber, not amber, it's like this darker, Golden, almost like almost um, mustard color, not not yellow mustard, uh, more like craft mustard, like I don't even know uh, mustard with the freaking 
Oh my god, the mustard with like the whole seeds in there, mustard seeds in there. I don't even know what it's called, man. Uh, brain fart today. But yeah, it has that, you know, orangey golden color to it. Yeah, but not a hazy IPA by any means. It is absolutely a West Coast IPA. It is very, I'm gonna say very dank, but it, is, it has slight dankness to it. And it is a uh, bitter beer, man. You don't like bitter beers, don't drink this. I mean, or drink this and, you know, regret life, I suppose, or whatever, if you don't like bitter beers. But it's, a, it's an IPA, it's a double IPA. A West Coast double IPA. It's gonna be bitter, man. And, you know, if you're drinking IPAs and you don't like bitterness, Yes, stick to the New England style IPAs, but IPAs are meant to be bitter, dude. Like, that's just, that's what it is. Extremely, extremely citrus dominant in here. First, first uh, note I get is a lot of pithiness, a lot of citrus pithiness, and then melts into more like a citrus juice, um, sweeter, I suppose, yes, and then it melts into more uh, dankness, like there's a lot of dankness to this, uh, the bitterness kind of rides all the way through, and you get slight malty sweetness on the back end here, I'm not quite sure what the bottle date on this is, I don't think it has one, um, yeah, I don't think it has, I don't think any of their beers have a bottle on date here, and it's 90 IBUs, here we go. I totally missed that. 90 IBUs, man. 9% ABV. So it is definitely a bitter beer, and I mean that's that's what a West Coast beer is: dank and bitterness, right? No pine, uh, no pineiness in here, but it is def absolutely dank and uh, bitter. And I I miss those, man. Just drinking a lot of hazies lately, or just you know ever since they came out, really ever since it became a thing, just a lot of hazies, and you know you just kind of you got go back to where you started. I remember when I wasn't able to drink IPAs or I didn't like IPAs, I was eight, which I was able to drink anything. Uh, but I didn't really like them because of the bitterness. And then over time, man, I think it's just an acquired taste. You just start drinking IPAs over and over and over. It's kind of like getting to beer. You just drink beer over and over. Uh, even if you don't like it, you know, you go to parties or whatever and that's just what you do. You just drink beers or whatever. I guess you can drink juice, water, things like that, soda. But I chose beer and eventually developed a palate for beer, man. Same thing with IPAs, took a little longer, but uh, eventually developed a palate for West Coast IPAs. And then if you can drink a West Coast IPA, or even a West Coast double IPA, uh, I don't think the bitterness changes between a single or a double, but like you can basically drink anything, man. Like it is, they're bitter beers, dude. They are absolutely bitter. If you can drink this, I believe you can drink any beer. Um, you might not like it, but you'll be able to drink them. That's for sure. Like I don't think anything would phase you, bitter, bitterness-wise, um, when you're talking about beer. If you can drink a West Coast IPA, mouthfeel, I would say it's half a step above water consistency, but I expected it to be, you know, pretty much just water. Um, the beer, it's not super complex. I wouldn't say it's complex. It's an easy drinking beer, but it has a lot going on. You got the citrus, you got the dickness, you got the malt sweetness, you got the pithiness, you got the melon. Got the, um, uh, I already said citrus, right? Yeah, citrus. Uh, sweetness of like the dank melon and the slightly um, candied, like on the nose, it was super sweet. On the or, uh, palate, it is less sweet, but it's still there. It's like a slightly coated, uh, I would say citrus peel, not actually like the fruit itself, because you do get citrus, but it's more like a citrus, like a orange zest, not quite orange juice. Um, again, it is in West Coast IPA, which is probably why there's like no juice qualities to it or very little juice qualities. But yeah, overall, solid, solid drinking beer, man. Pelican also does. Uh, has a beer called Dank IPA, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I think I like that just a tad more. Uh, I think it comes with a green label. This is an orange label. Uh, I think it's a green label, but yeah, like I, I like that one quite a bit. I remember that it's not as bitter, but the flavor is more like slightly sweet, maybe not as malty, and uh, the dankness, dankness is there. Excuse me, but this is absolutely a great beer, man. Uh, Pelican. The brew very solid beers, not very hyped up, obviously, but very very solid beers, and I'm happy to drink them any day of the week, man. Uh, yeah, this is Pelican Brewing's 
Double IPA, I think that's all. Yeah, no, yeah, double IPA is called Beat Breaker. 9% uh, ABV, 90 IBUs from Telebook, Oregon. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Comments, link below. Subscribe for more videos. Hit that bell for notification of new videos. And as always, dream big dreams and believe all things are possible. Thank you for watching. Cheers.